We've had a wonderful tradition at St. Stephen's for choosing our keynote speaker at graduation. It is to bring an alum from 10 years past who is still young enough to relate to our seniors, can remember some of the same teachers our seniors have had in class, like Mr. Whelan, Mr. Moore, Ms. Murphy, Mrs. Shields, and yet has had an exciting 10 years since they've graduated from St. Stephen's. Tonight, our speaker, Michael, came to St. Stephen's as a sixth grader and graduated as a member of the class of 2007. As a student at St. Stephen's, he was involved in school plays and many other activities. He went on to attend the University of Miami, where he double majored in mathematics and computer science, focusing on statistics and cryptography. Michael graduated as valedictorian of his program, earning the distinction of Phi Beta Kappa during his junior year. After college, Michael went to work in finance at Goldman Sachs before returning to his master's from MIT, where he graduated at the top of his class with a perfect GPA. Michael currently works in strategy consulting at Bain and & Company and lives in Atlanta with, with his wife, Krista, the class of 2006 at St. Stephen's. Michael still comes back to Bradenton very often to visit both his parents and Sweetberries. <laughs> Please help me give Michael Schick a warm St. Stephen's welcome. Michael. Thank you, Jan. Friends, family members, and most importantly, class of 2017, congratulations, you made it. With where you are all headed to college, and with what I know graduates from St. Stephen's go on to do, I know that this is the first in what is going to be a long string of accomplishments for all of you, and it's an honor to be here tonight to participate in this. And it's not an honor that I take lightly. When Jan asked me a couple of months ago to speak, my mind immediately filled with a range of different things to talk about, between life, college, and on. And while it was a little overwhelming at first, I remembered I have an unfair advantage. I can just think back to this graduation that I had 10 years ago from St. Stephen's when I was in your seat. And I remember from our graduation the call to action very clearly. It was, follow your dreams. As I looked across my row, by the end of the speech, literally half of the people were asleep, following their dreams. <laughs> so with that, I think I got the more subtle takeaway, which is keep it short. <laughs> Probably a relief to everyone, but most specifically in these front three rows. So as opposed to speaking for 30 minutes, I'm going to speak for 12. And I think that having been to enough of these graduations, one, you deserve to know that this is going to be a finite experience. And number two, I know that there is, there is no greater joy that you can give to an audience than the joy when the speech is over, which will be in 12 minutes. <laughs> now, I don't have an amazing story to tell about triumphs finally scaling Mount Everest, nor am I a doctor or any other profession with an actual skill set. I work in business. And I guess if I had to summarize what it is that I do know how to do, it's to determine the value of things. Now, sometimes that's pretty straightforward, like, for instance, if you take the value of one concrete at Sweetberries, <laughs> and then you multiply that by the entire graduating class, you get, I would call it pure happiness mixed with sugar, but realistically, it's a bribe for you all to remember at least one good thing from tonight. <laughs> So what about something a little bit harder to value than delicious custard? What about something like a pacemaker or a medical device in a developing country? Do you keep the price low to let people afford it and to save lives? What if to do that you had to raise prices in another country? How do you value two different human lives? Not everything has a monetary or an intrinsic value that's easy to determine. 
So what I'd like to do with my brief time tonight is share the value of three things in life for the next four years and beyond that are maybe a little bit harder to value. And because my wife is a kindergarten teacher, I know the value of both rhyming and also the importance of props. So I brought some props. Okay, so I'm gonna share, I didn't realize that this is way too big. I could have gotten a smaller one. <laughs> I'm gonna share with you the value of twine, the value of brine, and the value of time. Okay, <laughs> let's start with the value of twine. Now, the value of this rope is probably a couple of bucks. But if you look across the graduating class, there's a piece of this stuff around the necks of select individuals that I would gather has a lot more value than the price of the materials. The value of twine, then, is wrapped up in the meaning that we ascribe to it. Here tonight, the symbol is achievement. So let's talk about achievement. What's that worth in your life? Jan gave a very generous introduction. But if you notice, there weren't any academic accolades to speak of from my time at St. Stephen's. That's in no way an oversight. Jan doesn't make mistakes with this stuff. There's really just very little to talk about. I didn't graduate St. Stephen's with honors. I graduated by the skin of my teeth and with two really stressed out parents who I'm pretty sure were just happy there was a diploma up here with my name on it. <laughs> but academic honors at my time at St. Stephen's weren't the metric by which I valued achievement. It wasn't something that I ascribed much value to yet. Maybe that rings true to some of you tonight, and maybe less to others. But the message I would have for you, and parents, please pay attention to this part, it is never too late to change what it is that you value and the achievements that excite you. That's what college is for. Know that for each of you, in whatever arena of your life it is, academics or otherwise, you can be one of those people with twine around your neck if you value it and you work for it. You should also feel pretty good about the value of a St. Stephen's education, because if you can go from middle of the pack not really doing much to valedictorian at MIT, you're in pretty good hands here, and you can turn it on whenever you want. You've got the tools to do it. <laughs> now, before we move on, let's not confuse things either. Those of you who've already received your recognition tonight have not only earned it, but you've also set yourself up for continued future success. The accomplishments you've made in high school can and do set you up for continued success in college and beyond. And you can trust me when I say this because I was one of the people who had to come back from that deficit. So what's the overall bottom line on this? Success and achievement are important. They're highly valuable in your life. But know what metrics define success to you. And also know that if you haven't already found the metrics that excite you, it's not even close to too late. OK, moving on to number two, the value of brine. Now, you've probably already picked up from the first object that the value of the smelly pickle juice in this jar is probably not worth a whole lot and not really worth us spending our time on. But what about rep what it represents? Preservation. Or, for we humans, perseverance. What's the value of that in your life? And since we got Ms. Klein in the house, you know we got to do some biology references. Traditionally, I'm sorry. <laughs> Robert Sapolsky, a famous professor of biology at Stanford, would tell you just how important perseverance is for our species. It's one of only a handful of traits that make us uniquely human, distinct from the other animals with which we share 99% of our DNA. The story begins with a molecule, in this case dopamine, the chemical associated with happiness. Traditionally, biologists believed that a spike of dopamine was associated with rewards. When you go to Vegas your freshman year and you win at the slot machine, you're happy, and you get a dopamine spike. But what's actually being learned right now is that that spike in dopamine doesn't happen when you get your reward. It happens from the anticipation of it. That's why people will stay at those slot machines long after they don't win. And while there are some other animals that get a spike in dopamine from anticipation, humans, all of us, are entirely unique in how long we can go before we get our reward. And you've all heard the story. You did really well in your interviews, got into the right preschool, worked hard, go to a prestigious college, get the great job, and someday, if you're lucky, you get into the nursing home of your dream. 
It is amazing the gaps that we can sustain. But actually living through those gaps can be really hard. We can all pretty well see the value of persevering in life, but sometimes it's easier to just give up. And most of us would call that time math class particularly. St. Stephen's have, has already prepared you for what's coming in college. And if you're nervous about it, or find yourself in the large classrooms with unfamiliar faces, know that others are just as unsure as you are, and that you've got what it takes if you give it your all. From math classes at MIT to new hire training at Goldman Sachs, I've seen that all of us can be unsure, and the smartest person in the room isn't always the person who succeeds. It's the person who never quits. So what's the takeaway on the value of perseverance? It's not easy, but if you can push through the gaps, it'll be what leads to your success. The value of perseverance, then, is a function of time and your willingness to stick through the tough spots. OK, last one. Doing good. We've done the value of twine, or of achievement. We've done the value of brine, persevering in life. So what about time? How do you value time? It's been said that time is the only currency that matters. You can buy a fancy vacation or a nice new phone, but you can never buy back your time. Once you've spent it, it's gone, and there's no way to get it back. At some point, and maybe you've already had it, you get a very sudden awakening to the surreal but very real ticking clock. Personally, I experienced this for the first time a few years ago at a hospital in Miami when I was told that I have a heart condition and that my personal clock was going to tick just a little bit faster than the friends I grew up with and the people that I love. Viewing time as finite changes the priorities that you have. And because I value your time, I'll cut to the chase. If time is a currency, then the easiest way to determine its value is to think of it like you would your last dollar. How would you spend your time if you had 24 hours left? My guess would be that you wouldn't spend it counting your fortune or counting your fame, excuse me, your fame to strangers. You'd probably divide it between your friends, your family, and for some of you, the person that you love. And I know parents, it is way too early for that one, but just bear with me on this. If you're like me, you probably think that friends come and go, and specifically the ones from high school, those are probably the ones that go. To this day, I have been shocked at how many of my closest friends, including my best friend, Paul, who I think might be here, are from St. Stephen's. Sure, we spend most of our time texting about how stupid the other person is, but when you're still texting each other after 10 years, you're probably a little bit closer than you like to admit. And with 40% of this class going to college with at least one other person from St. Stephen's, it's a pretty good bet you're going to be close in 10 years as well. As far as family, well, for all their stupid rules, I would still wager that when time does run out, we would all give everything to spend just one more day with our parents. When you really think about it, they embody the qualities that all of us strive towards. They love you and they care about you, sometimes to the point where it hurts. Mothers, that would be you. And they sacrifice everything in their lives to ensure that you have the things that they never did. Fathers, that one's also you. To your parents, you're their greatest success, their greatest achievement. They love you, and they're proud of you no matter what you do. And finally, the point I'd like to end on tonight is that, is, is that as important as all of that, if not more, is the person that you love. You never know when you're going to meet them, and amazingly, some of you may have already. I know that feels like a crazy statement, but I met my wife, Krista, here at St. Stephen's, and she is far and away the best thing that has ever or will ever happen to me. Everything I've achieved in life would be meaningless without her, and she's the one who helps me persevere through the hard times. So whether you've already met, already met your future partner, or will in the coming four years or beyond, know that they are the most important thing you can spend your time on. Don't be fooled by the fool's golden life, things like work and money. Don't let those distract you from what really matters, your friends, your family, and the person you love. So the final takeaway for tonight, time is the most valuable thing we have. And while it's fleeting, you get to choose how you spend it. I hope you stay close to the people around you, 
for the next four years and beyond. Those same people that you held hands with earlier, stay close to them. I hope that you actually call your parents. They are really going to miss you. And know that no matter what, there are so many people that are excited about what you're going to go on to do and are proud of you for doing it. Again, my sincerest congratulations to each of you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this evening. And I'm going to let you come up here now. Thank you. <laughs>